All right, for more on the migrant situation, we are joined by Naeem Gina. He is currently the executive director of the Afro Middle East Center, a research institute dedicated to uh, studying the Middle East and North Africa relations between that region and the rest of Africa. Once again, welcome to Africa Live. We appreciate your company. Well, we have seen a surge in migrants in the past couple of weeks. What is driving the surge in migrant numbers from your perspective? things. I think that uh, one is, uh, you know, a large number of these migrants are from uh, from the African continent. Um, and many of them are from places like Somalia, um, Sudan, uh, Ethiopia, etc., where there have been particularly difficult political military situations in the past few months. Um, and, you know, a large number of refugees uh, as a result of that. So that's, that's the one kind of factor. Um, and, and another factor is that um, uh, with the with the lockdowns in many countries, um, movement has been impeded over the past year or so, and so there's in in a sense a kind of back uh, backlog of people that might have wanted to come from uh, the middle of last year uh, or wanted to go to Europe middle of last year and then have been backed up. And thirdly, is that usually when the weather starts warming up in in the north, um, you get an increase in the numbers. So um, that factor, together with the with the other two, means that we've seen the past um, uh, few months, uh, two or three months, um, a huge increase in, in numbers compared to, let's say, last year, the year before. Um, I think about 13,000 uh, since the beginning of this year until today. All right. Naeem, the EU executive says member states should help Italy with migrant relocation. Is there any action towards this so far? Well, there doesn't seem to be any action, and uh, EU member states uh, generally, you know, seem happier to just sit back and uh, uh, not get involved in it. Uh, clearly, what what they do by such an action is make it seem like there actually is a crisis. Uh, but according to the uh, according to the UNHCR, there isn't a crisis. That that Europe is quite easily able to absorb these migrants, uh, move them around uh, within EU and uh, take care of them without creating the, the sense of a crisis. The, you know, creating the sense that there is a crisis um, allows them to, to put the blame for, for everything onto the migrants themselves, make it seem as if they are swamped and overloaded and, and all of that. Um, and of course, uh, what, what's even more convenient for the EU is that the first port of call for many of these migrants is, uh, is Italy, Lampedusa, the, the island that belongs to Italy. Um, and Italy has a particularly right-wing anti-immigrant government. In fact, the Interior Ministry was last year, the, uh, last month, the court decided that he can be charged for kidnapping for preventing a ship from, uh, from landing. So it, it's kind of convenient for many of the other uh, EU member states to allow uh, Italy to be in, in the kind of front line of this, while the reality is that it's not a crisis. Migrants can arrive and can be absorbed into, into European society much more e easily than they are pretending they can. All right, uh, Naeem, uh, that brings me to uh, my final question. Compelling statements that you've made there, by the way. Uh, enlighten us, how do countries navigate the migrant crisis, especially now during the coronavirus pandemic? Well, the pandemic, of course, makes things uh, more difficult. It makes things more difficult both for the receiving countries as well as the, the migrants themselves and, you know, whichever countries they are coming from and countries that they are passing through. Um, you know, we often uh, talk about the difficulties for the receiving countries, but it's the migrants that are really the ones that, uh, that are in crisis. Um, but again, in terms of, of what the UNHCR has said around the issue of the migrants arriving in Italy over the past couple of months, um, that yes, it is a challenge with the, with the pandemic, but these challenges can easily be met by Europe if they plan properly and they put proper mechanisms into place. Um, there isn't a great enthusiasm in Europe to put such mechanisms into place, and that's the problem. All right, Naeem Jenna, Executive Director, Afro Middle East Center, thank you so much for your insight and analysis.